Phil, can we um, start the selection? Uh, Brody Smith, where's he in your mind at the moment? Yeah, I haven't seen him today, so I just spoke to him yesterday. He'll have to go through all the protocols. It's really out of my hands in some ways. We just hand it over to our doctors. We've got really good medical staff here, so unless they clear him, he won't play. Would you ever make a call on him, given the opposition this week at all? No, I'd never. Not on concussion, how it is at the moment. You know, it's a hot topic, particularly in America. Um, no, we we uh, default to our doctors in that in that regard. So does I, I. I really have. I won't even get into the conversation. Can you remember a time that someone's come straight back after concussion in the recent three or four years? I remember that North Melbourne incident, but I wasn't at that club. But not, not at any club I've been at. So a general feel uh, feel about how players perform when they come back. Have you experienced? Have you noted any trends or? Yeah, I haven't really, Steve, looked into it that, that closely. Um, so I haven't really, I couldn't, I couldn't comment. How late do you leave the call, Phil? Yeah, no, he's an important player, so it'll be as late as we can, Andrew, but our state league play tonight, so it can't be too late. Could you hold someone out of that game, though, tonight? To yeah, we could, but up? if he's no good today, uh, Andrew, I'll just go with what the doctor says and we'll, I'm not going to wait till Saturday morning. But if he's good today and then he still has a problem yeah, in the next 48 hours? I, I think it's still, it will be tested today from, yeah. from my knowledge on it. Yeah. But, um, look, someone else will step up. I'm really confident whoever puts the Crows jumper on and we've got a number of players available that they'll do the job. Will it be as good as Brady Smith? Who knows? Scott Thompson's had a couple of games now and uh, he looked a bit like a, a, boy, a man amongst boys in some of the footy yesterday, uh, the other day in the State League. Is he ready to come back in your mind? Yeah, I think I'm on record saying I like everyone to play two games. Scott's now played two games. We're about to have selection. He'll come under strong consideration. Two great wins in the first two games. Um, this week you play against the side many are expecting you to be. Is that a good test of the maturity to see if the group can handle that external expectation? Oh, I don't take anything for granted in this league. Um, I've been really impressed with Melbourne's two games. I think we've won six quarters of footy, and I think they've won six quarters of footy. So. Uh, no, I expect they're well coached. They've got a good coaching group there now. Um, Simon Goodwin's there, Brendan McCartney's there, guys I rate highly in the industry. have had a lot of um, early picks. They've brought some talent in. I'm expecting a, a Paul Roos team will defend really hard. And the thing I've seen from them this year, they actually have added a bit of offence to their style as well. So we'll be challenged on Saturday. Given from what you've seen from them this, uh, this year, what's the key, do you think, to, uh, to beating the Melbourne side? Well, I thought on the weekend, I thought GWS got on top at stoppage in the second half and I'm sure they would have done a lot of work on that Melbourne this week. So each week the midfield battle is a battle within a battle. You need to win that, you need to get field position, you need to hold your field position. Nothing really changes, Harry. Is that what you're sort of talking about on the catch of uh, pumping up contested footy? Is, uh, you know, I think you were saying that but often the public sort of rushes it off as just a footy term, but... The real value of contested footy could be on show. Yeah, I think maybe as coaches we, we roll out the contested possession line and for you guys and maybe even for our fans, our fans think, oh, here we go again, it's a cliche. What I was trying to explain on, uh, on the couch was in club land we invest an enormous amount of time on teaching these guys how to win the contested possession. Like I mentioned about having grappling coaches, um, I mentioned about the congestion round stoppage, it's not a throwaway line. We really invest heavily in it and I believe strongly that it's one of the most important indicators of whether you're going to win the game or not. How much have you improved then since you came in in October? Well, Adelaide's always actually been a pretty good contested ball team if you look back over the journey. Um, so it's hard for me to compare what's gone on here in the past. We actually lost the ground ball uh, differential last week against Collingwood, so you might have seen I wasn't very happy at three-quarter time. And that was the challenge that I gave to our group, was to win the ground ball and tackle combination in the last quarter, which they did. We'll need to do that on Saturday. Do you think then previously that maybe the club rested on their laurels a bit if you, you know, you're in such a commanding position that you were demanding more even though the game's probably over? I can't comment on what's gone on here previously. I wasn't here. So we touched on the subs rule last week. Today, Adam Goods has offered to play in the AFL rather than the sub for the second consecutive week with Sydney. Um, do you think it's time they actually get rid of it completely? Again, I get asked these questions and then 
got asked these questions about interchange and sub, and then people say you've been in, you've been a senior coach for two games, and you want to start changing the rules. I'm not on a crusade. I don't like the sub. I've mentioned at Adelaide we don't actually call the player the sub. Um, I know the AFL is looking at reviewing it. I'll be interested to see what they come up with. So you don't want up at all, obviously. I don't like it. No. Yeah. Um, so what about that situation? Greg was a sub. Um, last weekend, we have a philosophy that you know the same sub two weeks in a row. I do have that philosophy, Andrew. So um, I don't like it. Although I, I, I gave last week the example where for Andrew Gaff, a young a young skinny kid coming to AFL, but with good talent, it was really good for him to be the sub for a number of weeks. With the players that I've got available at the moment. Um, Probably only Jake Lever would be that player at our club, and he's not really suited to be a sub. So with Mitch Quigg, you make a decision you're either playing in your 21 or you put him back in the SNFL? Yeah. Why don't you like it? It's a bit like the interchange. I don't think it's part of our game. Simple as that. It's never been the game. We brought it in for whatever reasons we did bring it in, and then the sub was brought in to even it out if you got an injury early. My argument is just bring the interchange back, cap back and then you don't have to worry about it. But I'm only you know, a sec, second game coach, so I'm not trying to drive an agenda. That's just my opinion. Brent Riley, um, what, what's the latest with him? When does he make a call on his future or does the club make a call on, on him? He was at training yep. uh, yesterday, so progress is coming along. Um, he still has some rehab work that he needs to be doing at the moment, like he's still, he can't drive a car at the moment, so we're just going to let him get his life in order, Andrew, and then we'll make those decisions. So you're not in any hurry to do no. any of that? No. Phil, you pointed out last week, of course, winning in Melbourne gets you some respect externally. Uh, obviously you're on the couch this week as well, do you feel that win over Collingwood <clears throat> started to make some leeways in that area? It's probably hard for me to comment, but Every time you win in Melbourne, I think you get a little, a few more credits in the bank. People will take notice of you a little bit more. Um, but that's an ongoing journey, so does I like to think we can win uh, anywhere, anytime. Um, I think that's when you get to the Sydney and the Geelong type clubs who just keep winning consistently and have that sustain, sustained success, that's when you get taken seriously in this industry. Uh, we've still got work to do. The first two games, the results given you great confidence about your methods, but you'll, you'll come here believing that, they're, that they work, but to actually see them materialise, um, yeah, personally, how has it, you know, has it given you a satisfaction that you're on the right path? Or? It's a small sample size, so it's really only been two games. I have great confidence in what I'm trying to get the players to deliver. It's more trust, though, so what I think we've been able to build up is I've now got trust that the players can do what I'm asking them to do and they've actually got some trust that what I'm doing actually can work. Um, we've got another great opportunity on Saturday to further build that trust. Just on that, Phil, uh, are you expecting some opposition sides now that have had a look at you for a couple of weeks to come at you tactically really hard and try to break down a few of your methods, a bit like the Swans did so well to put out late on the weekend? Yeah, that's the industry we're in. I've spent... Myself and my coaching group spent a week looking at what Melbourne do and trying to break down their methods. That's how it works. Um, we like to think, though, what we're trying to build, okay, that it can't, it'll stand up. It'll stand up in finals. It'll stand up under pressure. If you look at the two games, the North Melbourne game was a free-flowing game. Both teams tried to really take the game on, whereas last week what Collingwood brought against us was more that arm wrestle. They wanted to play us in the inside game, and it wasn't an attractive standard for mine. But it was a high pressure game, and like I said before, they actually won the ground ball differential, which I was dis uh, disappointed with. We're happy to get in an arm wrestle. Paul Roos teams normally brings an arm wrestle.